What is happening everybody, Molecular Narwhal here with some New Game Wednesday, the series where we typically review new indie games live, but it is not live this week, or the last four weeks, or the next five weeks after this, because I'm doing some traveling for school. Um, but I'm recording this now, so y'all can watch it. This is uh, Bohemian Killing, it's by the indie dev The Moon Walls, it's a whopping 13 bucks on Steam. Um, I don't know much about it. No clue what you do. It looks, looks kind of like a murder mystery simulator. But uh, sometimes I do a little research on these games before I play it. But that is not the case for this one. Uh, I basically looked at the Steam page just now. Um, it doesn't look like our kind of game. But uh, keep an open mind. I like the music so far. So uh, it looks dark and creepy. But let's see what we, what we think about. Let's just get right into it. Uh, as with any of my new game Wednesdays, this is pure and uncut. Since it's normally a live game review, the idea of that is you see me play it 100% and there's no cuts. And hopefully this will be like that. I won't cut out any bad stuff. This game adapts to the choices you make. Each lie can change the verdict better for better or worse. Oh, okay. It's a story-driven game then. Paris, hint. Remember that during your testimony, you are not creating history. You are lying about what has already happened. In Bohemian Killing, there are hundreds of possibities you can frame other people. Live manipulate evidence and witness, plead guilty, or even act insane. She should be here by now. Okay. Who should be here by now? Press T to check the time. Oh my gosh, this is a filter we got going on here. So let's get started. I cannot read that. Wait, hang on. It is 11.15. Cool. What does that say, though? I can't read that. Use WASC to move, hold left shift to run. Am I supposed to be killing someone? Uh, open door? E? Left mouse button to attack or interact. What? Okay, I guess I can't go in there. Okay, I think I have to kill somebody. This is a pretty game. It's beautiful looking. Read a book. What, it takes me 15 minutes to read a book? In-game time runs like in real life, and it is important to arrange a reliable testimony. Enter the room. Okay. This is kind of scary. Hey, you can skip dialogues or holding E. During your testimony, it will skip a single dialogue line. During cutscenes in the courtroom, it will skip an entire scene and begin your next testimony. That make any sense? Okay. Uh. What is happening? Right. This is so weird. <laughs> that dude looked like a, a method. Oh, she's naked. Kinda. I'm so confused. Press left mouse button to kill her. Oh god, that mouth. I killed her. I don't know if I had an option. <laughs> there. <laughs> the Moonwalks Presents. A game by Marcin Makaj starring Stefan... Yep. Sorry about that dude's name. Okay, we're in Paris. Mo Bohemian Killing. Alright. Let's see. What? Excuse me? Did I just lose? Pa Palace de Justice. Hint, <laughs> you can skip that. Okay, we already know about that. Monsieur Eaton, I'm talking to you. Skipping court scenes on your first playthrough is not recommended. Okay. I'm sorry, Monsieur le Président. I, I was thinking. Do you understand the indictment? Sorry, but I have to ask the prosecutor to repeat. Monsieur Eaton, do you consider it to be a joke? You were charged with a serious crime. Please stay focused. Monsieur Prosecutor, please continue. I wonder if I can get subtitles on. Looks like there might not be subtitles. You turn up the volume a little bit then. Nah, that's too much. Alright, how about that? Okay. 
I accuse Alfrediton of murdering Marie Capet on the 17th of October 18. Facts presented by the prosecutor will be available during the game. Okay. That day, Alfrediton was at the theatrical premiere of Prométhée, Vol du Feu, which took place at Opéra Garnier. As it is apparent from the testimony of witnesses, the accused left at about 8.30 p.m. before the end of the banquet. At about 9.25 p.m., he rented a room in his name at the Caucasus Hotel, which is adjacent to the building in which he lives. It was in that room uh, that approximately at 11.16 p.m., Marie Capet was murdered. Next, uh, the accused returned to his house, and at about 10.05 p.m., he entered his apartment in the company of Marie Capet, or let her in. It results from the fingerprint analysis. It did not show the victim's fingerprints on the outer side of the door, only on the inner. Alfred Eaton, by means of deception or threats, led the victim to his secret workshop, which is located on the third floor of his apartment. The police report did not indicate any signs of struggle or resistance. The accused probably wanted to test on Marie Capet the prototype of a torture machine of his construction, okay. which was in the room along with medical tools and manuals of torture. It was? When Marie Capet realized what the accused intended to do, she grabbed a metal rod lying in the room and hit the accused on the head, which caused a real threat to his life and, according to doctors, may have caused unconsciousness. The fingerprints of Marie Capet's left hand were found on the rod as well as Alfred Eaton's traces of blood. Traces of blood were also found on the floor of that room. At the time of his arrest, the accused had an extensive wound on his head, as confirmed by medical examination. Seizing the opportunity, Mary Capi fled from the apartment. She was stressed and in a hurry. This was confirmed by her numerous fingerprints secured on the inside of the door of the apartment of the accused. Then, Marie Capé ran into a nearby hotel, the Caucasus. It was the same hotel in which the accused rented a room. As it appears from the testimony of the clerk, Marie Capé was extremely stressed, repeating the word doctor and police. Probably she wanted to call for help. When the clerk went to get some water to calm Marie Café, she disappeared. The next day, on the 18th of October, about 8.32 a.m., a maid found her body in a room rented by Alfred Eaton. It was covered with numerous fingerprints of the victim and of the accused, and had traces of the victim's blood. The immediate cause of death was a severe blow to the abdomen in the liver area with a blade of about 14 centimeters length. The murder weapon constructed by the accused was secured in his apartment. Marie Capet's unwashed blood stains were still present on it, as well as the fingerprints of the accused. The accused is also charged by the testimony of one of the neighbors who passed the accused at the front door of the building in which they both lived at about 11.30 p.m. The witness testified that the clothing of the accused was stained with blood. Unfortunately, the said clothes were not found. At the time of committing the alleged crime, the accused was sane, which means he acted consciously. For committed crimes, the accused shall be liable to life imprisonment or the death penalty. 
Has the accused finally understood the indictment? Oui, Monsieur le Président. Does the accused plead guilty to the charges against him? No, Monsieur le Président. Does the accused want to provide explanation? Oui, Monsieur le Président. Uh, Monsieur le Président, could I ask you for some conversation time with my client? Of course. I just wish it would not take too much time. We've already wasted too much of it. Monsieur Eaton, please note that you can look through evidence at any moment. It is available by pressing tab. I will show the defense evidence to the court at the time of your uncovering during the testimony. It might surprise the prosecutor. If necessary, you can recall the string of events according to the prosecution by pressing the Q key. Will you need my help during testimony? I, I will give you my advice and remind you of important facts and events. Do you need to help you during your testimony? Yes. We are ready, uh, Monsieur le Président. Okay, so prosecution. This is weird. Alfred Ethan's dagger, the murder weapon designed and manufactured by Alfred e Eaton. So unique, found in the secret workshop of the accused. Unwashed traces of blood were found on it, as well as Ethan's fingerprints. That's prosecution. Defense. Locked evidence. Defense's evidence can be unlocked during the testimony. Supporting. Suspect's identification card. Full name. Class low. How you want to even... Okay. Oh, there's, oh, there's multiple. Metal rod found in Alfred Eaton's secret workshop. It was probably a part of some sort of invention. Traces of blood belonged to the accused, and fingerprints of Mari Capet's left hand were found on the rod. The police report the victim was found in the room. Uh, okay, this is all stuff we heard already. So what's, we don't have any actual defense yet. These are just our things. Uh, I was capable but not very attentive student. He was bullied to school because of his gypsy origin. Often the, he returned home battered. He helped his parents in their grocery store but dreamed of a better life and a social advancement. The prototype of his vending machine was built at the back of the store. Soon a wealthy investor offered Alfred cooperation. This is how the Lefeu company originated. With his first money he bought an apartment in Paris. He planned to buy a second one for his parents. Hugo Ar that's the like neighbor. Have any knowledge of the torture? Hugo Argent is a wealthy factory owner who has invested in Alfred E. Okay, so he invests in my inventions. Okay. You guys can read all the stuff you want, but I don't, I don't really care to. Information from the... We officially inform that Alfred Britsat does not have, nor has he ever owned, a telephone or a telegraph. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that's what that was. Okay, and we... There's a... String of events... Event. The accused was at the theatrical premiere of Prom Thingy, which took place then. Supporting a Hugo's agent's testimony, number one. Event. The accused rented a room on, of of his name at the Caucasus, Caucasus Hotel, which is adjacent to the building in which he lives. It was in that room that approximately 11 16 she was murdered. Guest book and the clerk's testimony. The accused entered his apartment in the company of Mary. Okay, alright, we heard all this stuff already. We are ready, uh, Monsieur le Président. And let's get started. Monsieur Eaton, what were you doing on October 17th, 1894, from 8 to 12 p.m.? There was a theatrical premiere of Prométhée that day, which was sponsored by Le Feu, in which I am the lead designer. Starting at 7 p.m., I was at Who's the talking? premiere at the Opéra Garnier. That guy, I guess? Around, uh, or am I talking? After the play, I found that I did not want to attend the dull banquet, and instead I preferred to work. I said goodbye to Hugo Argent, uh, president of Le Feu, and I drove home. I got there at about 9 p.m. Hint, remember that during your testimony, you're okay. What's up with that? Okay. Moment, I admired the charming streets of Montmartre. I tried to stop the car, but it ran out of fuel. I already returned from Opera Garni on fumes, and there was no way to go anywhere else. Oh, so I literally walk out my testimony. 
What? I entered the Café de Paris cafeteria. I wanted to drink some good wine and eat a piece of cheese. A group of Parisian rabble tried to throw me out, screaming that there was no room for gypsy thieves. They beat me and threw me into the street. I was all covered in blood. Did you report this fact to police officers? No, Monsieur le Président. I decided that it was <laughs> this is so weird. my time. <laughs> and why is that? A second of my word is more important than the lifetime of each and every one of those plebeians. Besides, if I had reported it, I would have done them a favor. What do you mean, Monsieur Eaton? In jail, they would have had better living conditions than those holes that they call houses. I understand. <laughs> Please return to your testimony. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> This is it. We live out the testimony. I looked at nice. the poster of the play Prometheus, sponsored by Le Feu Compagnie. It was the exact premiere where I had spent the evening. What is all this? What's those feathers falling down? I do not record that. Oh. Can't go that way. I read cultural announcements. Okay, what, what a great. You had one job game. Put something interesting in there. Okay, so. I do not record that. Oh, okay, so we have to go in here. I opened the door and entered my building. In the game, you can find their actions marked X minutes. At me. Okay, whatever. We've seen that already. All this random loading is kind of dumb. Defense evidence number. Okay, so I got more defense evidence. Okay. This is the evidence. Let's see what I got here. Oh, okay. There's a lot of evidence. Okay. Monsieur le Président, this is the evidence mark with number two. It clearly shows that my client designed his interrogation machine with only the best intentions. According to his plan, it was supposed to be forwarded to the prosecutor's office and law enforcement agencies to improve the effectiveness of interrogation. <laughs> the prosecutor's suggestions that my client has supposedly <laughs> intended to use this device to torture helpless women is hasty and completely untrue. This letter only proves that the accused was looking for application of his torture machine and had not found any support from Ministère de la Justice, so he decided to test it on an innocent woman. You think? The court supports the view that the mere fact of an offer to the Ministère de la Justice does not constitute sufficient evidence that the allegedly accused acted in good faith when creating such a device. Monsieur Eaton, please go back to your testimony. So they don't really care about that, huh? Monsieur, thank you for your proposal, but the minister does not use interrogation methods based on pain. Methods proposed by you are inhumane, and what is the worst, they can result in numerous lawsuits for the violation of personal rights. Okay? Court supports the view that the mere fact of an offer to the Minister de la okay. Justice does not constitute I tried to skip that. evidence but that the allegedly accused acted in good faith when creating such a device. So I'm missing evidence one. Eaton, please go back to your but that's fine. Alright, so back we go. Go shopping for what? Uh, let's get some cheese because I said I wanted some cheese. So that's it. That's six. Enter. Then I bought something from the vending machine. Uh, 
Does it not get to me? There's that poster again. Can I look at the window? I stared out of the window at the magnificent display of fireworks. Yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> okay. Where's my my place at? I don't know which one's mine. I checked the light switch to see if it was already repaired, but it still didn't work. Where's my room at? How do I, I decided to use the stairs instead of the elevator? Why do I use the stairs? That's the real question. I opened the door and entered my apartment. Maybe I should have gone to someone else's apartment, but that would be sketchy. I wanna, I wanna try to get, uh, get off, you know, get innocent. I feel like that's the obviously the best right here. Okay, I'm all bloodied. Uh, okay, so we should go to the bathroom and clean ourselves up. If I can figure out where that is, that is. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Monsieur Ethan, an important event is approaching. Press Q to get acquainted with it. The Q's rented a room on the his name at the Caucasus Hotel, which is adjacent to the building in which he lives. It was in that room that approximately at 1116, Marie Capet was murdered. So at 2125, I have to rent a room? Is that what that's saying? Okay, let's see. How do we check the time? Time? What's 20? What's 21? <laughs> 23 is 11. 22 is 10. 21 is 9. Okay, 9. Uh, oh, come on. Stop. Okay. At 9.25? Oh, God. We got to go now. How, how do I rent this room? What? Then I used the stairs. I didn't think time would fly by so fast. <laughs> How do I rent a room? No, I'm not gonna work on my adventure. I have to call to rent a room. Make a call. May if I call, I can rent a room. A few minutes talking on the phone. Who did you call? It has nothing to do with the case. Okay. How do I rent a room? <laughs> then I opened the door. No, how do I rent a room? It's adjacent to my place, they say. Then I used the stairs. Okay, all right, all right, all right. We have to go rent a room adjacent to our place. Right? That's what we- I, I feel like we have to, and it's string of it according to- Hey, remember that in order to arrange a credible line of defense, you will have to take the- Take time lapse into account, press T to access the watch, and watch your own actions with evidence, press tab. In the string of events according to the prosecution. So I have to follow the string of events. At least approximately. Okay. Or else I'll be in trouble. Then evidence-wise, I only have one piece of evidence so far. They have lots of evidence. That booty. Oh, God, I, I, there's no way I can possibly do all that. Not smart enough for that. Then I called the elevator. Take the elevator down, but not up. Makes sense. Oh my God, we're just barely gonna make it. Oh, well, we're not even gonna make it. We're just. It goes in real time though, so I guess you have lots of time. I think it says it goes in real time anyway. Then I opened the elevator grate. Go to the ground floor. I took the elevator to the ground floor. How do I go okay, this place is supposed to be adjacent, right? Okay, I can't it's like a video sequence, I guess. This is interesting. I feel I feel like I'm gonna fail. But okay. It's the kind of thing you have to play several times to figure out. 
I have to go adjacent though. And I thought all that was adjacent was a freaking coffee shop. <laughs> Cause I have to go rent the room. Oh, maybe that's it. The Q's in rented a room on his name, which is adjacent to the building in which he lives. It was in that room that approximately 1116, she was murdered. For a moment, I admired the charming streets of Montmartre. Is this the place I'm supposed to be renting? Adjacent means next moment, to. So it should be here, right? Is this it? Yes, this is it. Then I opened the gate. There we go. The nearby hotel, Cocasis. Okay, Cocasis. All right. If you are covered in blood, you can wash it off by taking a bath or changing clothes. If you are drunk, it will pass spontaneously after a few moments. Okay. Okay. So I need to rent a room somehow. It's basically 925, right? I wanted to rent a room in a hotel, but the clerk said that a room had already been rented in my name. He said it's on the top floor and gave me a spare key. Monsieur Eaton, do you claim that you did not rent that room? Oui, Monsieur le Président. But I knew it could not be a coincidence. The name Ethan is not that common. So you tried to learn more from the clerk? Yes, however he hid behind his professional secrecy. I huh. knew he wouldn't tell me a thing. I do not understand one more thing. You live next to the hotel, so why did you want to rent a room there? Sometimes I meet up with some girls of Moulin Rouge and... Due to my reputation, I prefer not to do it in my apartment. Did you meet Marie Café face to face? <laughs> no, Monsieur le Président, never. I understand you. Oh. Please continue. Okay, so I came here to meet with some ladies. Okay, okay, so what's the next event? 2125 at 2205. The Q's entered his apartment in the company of Marie Capet or let her in. He probably wanted to test on her the prototype of a tour. Oh, so I. I don't go, I go back to my place. Oh my god, guys, they, <laughs> there's so much. Uh, like he's entered the part, his apartment in the company of Marie Capet, or let her in. He probably wanted to test on her the prototype of the torture machine of his construct. When the woman realized what the accused intended to do, she grabbed the metal rod lying in it. You know, I used that phone despite not having the phone company saying I don't have a phone. I've never used a phone or something like that. Fingerprint, police report. Okay, how do I find Marie Capet? That's the question, I guess. Next, I threw a few francs to the fountain in the hotel. Okay, thanks. Okay, so... I mean, I guess I can go up to my room. Guess that's what I'll do. What floor is my room even on? I called the elevator. Oh, it's here, right? What am I doing? Did he say what floor my room was on? Okay. I examined the historic tableware. <laughs> Very interesting. Another grocery store files for bankruptcy. I read cultural announcement. All right. Great. For a moment, I admired the paintings of Paris. Yes, you did. Why am I walking so slow? 
this is not the floor I'm supposed to be on, I don't think. I opened the door and entered the room. Is this my room? This must be my room, right? Because the other ones that opened the door, this one said enter the room. Huh. President, there was a suitcase filled with money in the room, rented in my name. I did not see any reason not to take it. Please continue your testimony. Okay, so this is my room. Wait, okay, so next thing I'm supposed to do, the 2205. Is that coming up? Yeah, it's... It's a, uh, like, half, not 20 minutes away or so. I drank some yeah. Champagne. Yeah, I did. Yes, I did. Okay. Is this the newspaper still? Okay, so that took me a few minutes, right? I thought that was going to take me some minutes. Okay. Well, it didn't. Alright, I'm sure we can find some activities to do back home. Uh, no, it's not shave. No reason to do that. Guess if we're about to get our lady time on, might shave. But are these like ladies of the night or are these like legitimate women of interest? It's a valuable question. All right, so let's go head back home. This doesn't make any sense that I would go from here to home. Like everybody would know what's going on. I feel like, right? I would know what's going on. <laughs> but whatever. Alright, so we need to go back home. We still have like 20, 15, 20 minutes before we're supposed to be home, but... This is so confusing to keep up. <laughs> you have to like retroactively get yourself out of trouble. And I don't know what, like... He was into his apartment in the company of Marie Capet. So where is Marie Capet? That's the question. I'm sure I have to read that evidence to figure that out, but... But, forget that. I ain't about that life. I opened the door and walked out into the street. These loading scenes really kind of... hurt the gameplay. Shouldn't need all those loading screens. Okay, so those are the guys who beat me up last time, so let's not go back in there. I knocked, but no one answered. I guess it's not substantial evidence. Hi guys, don't beat me up again, please. For a moment, I admire the charms of Monarch. Let's go back in. Let's all be friends. God dang it. Again? I wanted to drink some good wine and eat a piece of cheese. A group of Parisian rabble tried to throw me out, screaming that there was no room for gypsy thieves. Does the game just ignore that this has already happened to me? They threw me into the street. I was all covered in blood. Monsieur Eaton, why did you walk into the same cafe where you had previously been attacked? I was hoping that this or similar rabble wouldn't be there anymore. Okay. And I would be able to drink wine peacefully. So I went back. <laughs> I went back for round two. <laughs> okay. This is a this is a really sketchy testimony, guys. <laughs> Feels bad. Feels bad, man. It's a weird game, man. Jeez. I noticed some muck on the floor. Was I here before? Do you usually have a similar attitude to other people? Do you believe you are better than others? Yes. If others treat me like trash just because of my gypsy origin, I do not intend to remain silent. Do you often meet with racist-based reluctance? Too often. 
especially since I've become famous. <laughs> In the eyes of all these fallen lords, I'm a nouveau riche. The poor think I'm a gypsy fraud and a thief. Did you feel hatred towards those people? I did. However, I certainly wouldn't kill anyone. They were not worth killing. Please return to your testimony. You noticed some garbage, and what happened next? This is the like uh, most back. <laughs> I'm just walking all over the place. I just want to know where to go. Okay. I guess I could go tell that one guy to put his bike. Away. I think it's the one dude with the name on his door. I think that's his bike. Maybe that. I could somehow, ooh, yeah. Then I opened the elevator grate. Yeah, let's go talk to this guy. Then I used the stairs. Why, why would I do that? Okay, let's talk to this guy. I knocked at Monsieur Brissot's door, and he called back after some time. Do you always visit your neighbors at such odd hours? Monsieur Brissot is the only neighbor I like. I believe with reciprocity. He goes to sleep late, and sometimes we like to argue about politics and the influence of La Révolution on today's past. Please, return to your testimony. I'm still bloody. <laughs> this is so bad. I'm doing so bad. Oh, man. Taking bathrooms. <laughs> Can I go on and talk to her? Nope. I opened the door to the living room of Monsieur Brissot. Let's talk to him. For a good ten minutes, I talked to Monsieur Brissot, and again. We had an argument about La Révolution. Monsieur Brissot felt regret that in modern France, the high birth was no longer relevant. Also, he boasted that he had hired a maid. I do not know where he found the money for her salary and did not see any effect of her work. The department was a mess, as usual. Wasn't that an odd thing? Yes, Monsieur le Président. If someone hires a servant, one can expect orders. And in this apartment, there was none. Did your neighbor say anything else about the maid? Yes, I was going to say it. It turned out that it was Marie Capé, my old classmate. We grew up in the same city, and I had not known that she had moved to Paris. So you admit that you knew the victim? Oui. I knew who she was. Uh-oh. Monsieur Brissot was not feeling well, and he asked me to come back later. So I, I did as he asked and left. Okay. Interesting. So what, when's this event? About 12.05, but I feel like I need to get cleaned up first. Or else, you know, I, I ain't going with no lady of the night like this. <clears throat> then I used the stairs. Wait, so accusing the company of. Or let her in. Okay. Then I opened the door to my apartment and entered. Okay, I don't have her yet, so she's gonna theoretically come up here to see me. I guess we'll see. It's fine. I heard someone knocking at the door. I opened. She saw my condition, and it apparently got her upset, but I assured her that everything was in order. I invited Marie Capé inside. She said she remembered me from school and was curious how things turned out for me. Okay. She had been recently hired as a maid by my Quote, unquote. <laughs> I showed her my apartment, my business. 
designs and inventions. She was delighted. So I thought maybe she would be interested in my interrogation machine. <laughs> I took her to my private workshop. I turned down my prototype machine to interrogate prisoners. Then I felt a blow to my there you head go. and I collapsed on the floor. There you go. I wasn't I wasn't doing anything to her. She just hit me. She just assaulted me. Yeah. Marie Café was nowhere to be found. She just came to kill me or something. I saw a spare part of my invention lying on the ground. I saw traces of my blood on it. Okay. I saw that the safe was open. And Café had stolen the designs of my most important invention. Why do you think, Madame Café? I don't know, Monsieur President. But I was going to find out. Yeah, so I'm gonna pursue her. There was blood on it. My blood. Then I opened the door. Okay, should I wash up? What's the next part of the story? Okay, 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 okay. So she fled. While Marie Capet uh, ran into a nearby hotel, it was the same hotel in which the accused entered a room. The woman was extremely stressed. Perhaps she wanted to call for help, and it was impossible to do from the building she lived in. When the clerk went to get some water to calm, she disappeared. The murder happened the next day on the 18th, about 8th, uh, made from. Okay. So 2316. To me, if I'm just nowhere near the room. So this needs to happen. 22.45. Do I have time to bathe? Yes. We'll take a bath before going after her, which doesn't make any sense. I took a bath, washing away any traces of blood. Boy, that doesn't make sense to my testimony, does it? Oh well. The shower part's gonna get me. Okay, and you use the stairs. Then I used the stairs. Ugh, this wall is disgusting. God. I'm on high sensitivity and still not very sensitive. Instead of the elevator, I opened the inner door. Okay, we're, we're close enough. I'm going in. Wait. Trina, it was. Okay. Oh no, I should have gone I should have gone to his place. Oh man. But we're gonna go back. I opened the door and entered the building where my apartment is. I went out looking for her. I ran out to see if she was out there. Now I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna see if she's in Mansoor's place. Okay, so now I'm gonna look for her again. Okay, we have 15 ish minutes. I was curious to see behind the door, but did not want to offend my host by nosing around. I knew how he is attached to the etiquette. I was curious to okay. see behind okay. the door, but. Did not want. I get it. I opened the door to the living room. There you go. I started asking Monsieur. May he sent her to kill me. If he knew where she was and what she had been doing in my apartment. May she's an assassin. He said he had no knowledge whatsoever about any of this, and he regretted that she had violated the peace of the building. He let me look around her room. Because he thought that maybe I would have some sort of clue explaining her outrageous behavior. Okay, so uh, I think I, I need to frame it that she was working with him. There was a letter tucked into Monsieur Brissot's book. The Lordship Service Association was the sender. The 
Lordship service. Okay. Monsieur le Président, this is the evidence mark with number. Okay, so this has number ten. Okay, they're doing. Monsieur le Président, this is the evidence mark with number ten. It is a letter sent by a fictitious organization to Monsieur Brissot. Which, as it was said in the letter, cultivated traditions of the French nobility and was sending Madame Capet as servant for free. The letter was sent several days before the murder. So the question arises who had really sent Marie Capet to Monsieur Brissot? And what hmm. were their intentions? To kill me or steal Thank my you things. For the, clarification. the accused may continue to testify. Oh, this is such a bad, like, you, you'd have to plan this out a lot better than I am. Holy cow. Okay, let's go in her room. Obviously. Uh, we, we gotta go over soon, though. Then, I opened the door to go in Marie Capet's room. See, I'm gonna take the book. And it was a socialist scribble. Yeah. Charles. Monsieur le Président, this is the evidence mark with number six. It shows Madame Capet's socialist views, which could have intensified aversion towards my client. <laughs> Thank you for your clarification, Monsieur. Please return to your testimony. Interesting. So she's she doesn't like me for some reason. She's socialist. Darn socialist. Okay. The next day on the 18th. Okay, so they think I killed her at 2316. Okay, so she goes in. So sometime after 2245, I need to go in there. So basically, as soon as possible. Alfred Ethan. Okay. She's after me. Monsieur le Président, this is the evidence marked with number seven. One can conclude that the victim is obviously obsessed with my client. Thank you for your clarification, Monsieur Eaton. Please continue. Okay, so it looks like she's obsessed with me. At least that's the picture I'm painting. I opened the door to Madame Capet's room. Okay, let's get out here. I noticed the damaged furnishings. The whole apartment was split from major reintegration. Yeah, I would say. Nothing in there, alright. Then I opened the door and left the apartment. Better follow her. See what no good she's up to. Alright, so this is interesting. Very interesting game. There's obviously a ton of different ways you can do it. I don't know how many different outcomes there are. I imagine there's probably a few different outcomes, but no way to know for sure. I'm just trying to play as well as possible. Okay. Oh, oops. Okay, we're going to go ahead and go in. Hi there, lady. Hmm. I entered the nearby hotel for cases. A little early. What? What's happened? I've just received an urgent package from the Procureur de la République containing new evidence in the case. I ask both the parties to get acquainted with it is a letter from the attorney's office from one week before the murder, which calls Alfred Eaton in attendance to forward the designs of the invention which he has constructed in secret from Le Feu Company. The firm acted on behalf of the president of the company, Hugo Argent. Monsieur Eaton, have you received the letter? Oui, Monsieur le Président. When did you receive it? I don't remember exactly, but probably on the 10th of October. So, exactly one week before the murder. Oui, Monsieur le Président. Which designs are mentioned in this letter? D 
designs of my secret invention on which I was working in my free time, it has no connection with Lifkin. Therefore, why did the firm send you this letter on behalf of Hugo Argent? Hugo must have guessed what great potential my invention had <laughs> and how profitable it could be. Did you keep your designs in your apartment? Uh, oui, Monsieur le Président, in the safe in my secret workshop. Due to the new circumstances, which may be relevant to the case, I order a rehearing of Hugo Argent. Please summon the witness. And at this time, I announce a break. The next court session will be held tomorrow at the same time. I didn't even finish my testimony. What? Okay. Read a letter from Hugo. I am in a deep regret that you have to stand before the court accused of such a terrible deed. I assure you that I deeply believe in your innocence and will do my best so that you can continue to work for the glory of Le Feu and toute la France. Cordialement, Hugo Well, I don't think I'm it because I actually stabbed her. <laughs> Responsibility for what you have done to our daughter. You will be beheaded. What? And even neither your millions nor your connections will be able to help you. Is nah. the stolen money not enough? Is your wrongdoing to all these poor people not enough? You have to tear everything away from us, including our only daughter. Death to the rich. What? Yep, that's so. That's Jesus. <laughs> My God. Your father and I are quite sure that you did not do it. You couldn't have. We love you, and we are waiting for you at home. Please leave this cursed Paris and return to your home in Paris. Mama and Papa. Yeah, prob probably good idea. Papa asks you not to mention the Hotel Castor. Apparently, you know what that means. Don't mention the Hotel Guest Book. Okay, guess that doesn't work. I cannot mention the Hotel Guest Book. This is going to be too long of a video. For sure. <laughs> Stuff for <laughs> Not like I haven't. Monsieur, we are all present so we can begin. To begin with, I inform you that Hugo Argent submitted further clarification on the letter from the attorney's office discussed yesterday. His testimony has been attached to the evidence. Monsieur Eaton, please continue your testimony from the moment you've ended yesterday. Alright. I mean, I don't know any situation where I don't kill her. <laughs> Maybe I'll call to tell them that I lost my inventions. I spent a few minutes talking on the phone. Okay, that didn't do anything for me. Okay, we can go up now. Do not mention the guest book. That's what I was told. Do not mention the guest book. Because if I say, hey, I followed her to the room, that might look bad on my part. I don't know. Do not mention the guest book. That's what he told me. So I am not mentioning it. I mean, why would I? Why would this sequence of events happen? Doesn't make sense, really. I opened the door and entered the room. See, I'm not bloodied anymore, so this doesn't make any sense. As I walked in, Madame Capi was standing in the center of the room. Curious. 
she started to yell at me that she robbed me according to the agreement and that she was supposed to be paid. She started to insult me, calling me a dirty gypsy, a thief, and a, and a fraud. She came with her fists at me. I shoved her off instinctively. Oh, I didn't grab the knife. I forgot the knife. <laughs> what do I do? I forgot the knife. What do I do? I don't know what to do. I forgot. I forgot the freaking knife. I forgot to look for the knife. <laughs> Maybe she has the knife on her? Well, what now? I did not know what to do. I escaped. Oh. I didn't want to hurt her. And I did not do it. Oh, okay. Did you not want to regain your designs? You had been robbed. I, I don't even know what I wanted, Monsieur le Président. I, I was confused. Oh God, I I've messed up. The head and I, I didn't think clearly. Well, please continue. Okay, maybe grab the knife is better. Then I opened the door. Who do I tell about the situation? Why is there no stairs in this building? That violates fire code. I won't press that button. There you go. I'm so confused. I, I was supposed to grab a knife and bring it. I'm pretty sure, but I didn't. But whatever. talk to you. What's the next event? So I go back. Oh. Okay, so I could be bloodied by beating up those guys. At 12 at 23:30 somebody finds me. Which it's not even like close to. Later, I opened the door and walked out into the street. So I'm gonna have to go to that place a third time to get beat up. So I, w I needed to have saved the getting beat up for the end of the night. Really. For a moment, I admired the charming streets of Montmartre. I do not recall that. I thought I saw somebody coming out. Uh, one of the neighbors passed me at 23.30. She's murdered at about 23.16. So I need to pass somebody right here at 23.30. In like half an hour. So I need to go get beat up in half an hour. I opened the inner door. I called the elevator. I messed up so hard. <laughs> Guess we can go I opened the elevator grate. tell what's his name about this. Then I took the elevator to the first floor. It's very confusing. Uh, I, I see all kinds of stuff I messed up at this point. I see lots of stuff that I did. 
I did wrong. <clears throat> I opened the door to the living room of Monsieur Brissot. You wanna fight? Is there nothing left to do with this guy? I opened the door to the living I was curious to see. I was curious to see behind the door that did not want to offend my hope. Okay, well. I know how this needs- I know I shouldn't have gotten beat up at the place twice. I should have saved that for the end. Like... To grab my house a little bit, eat some leftovers. leftovers from my lunch and drank some wine. Nice. I'm so matter of fact about all this. My groceries into the cabinet. I was cooking dinner for the next day. I opened the inner door. I just have frames decorating my place. Love their simplicity. Great. Uh... I looked into the warehouse in which I store some parts of my machine. I opened the elevator grate. Why is there an elevator here? Later, I went down to the basement using my freight elevator. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright. This is all over the place. <laughs> Can I not open this thing? I feel like that's like some super evidence right there. Le few. I looked at the pipe which delivers packages from one of the local warehouses to my purchasing machine. Huh. That's interesting. Kind of cool. It's like my garage or something. Must be. Can I go out here? No, you literally can't do like anything down here. This is kind of pointless. Thing. I took the freight elevator to my apartment. This would make no sense. I use it to take up the boxes with parts from Le Feu. This would make no sense for my story. Whatever. I just wanna. I just wanna have the. The passing on the thing. I got half an hour, right? Okay. About 1230. It's my boudoir. Work on your invention. I don't want to take 30 minutes. Why would I stop and listen to music for this time? Oh, it's like a secret lab, huh? My journal, in which I described the construction process of my interrogation machine, was on my desk. Okay. Monsieur le Président, this is the evidence marked with number three. This makes no sense. shows that my client had only his best intentions during the construction of his interrogation device. According to his plan, it would be forwarded to the prosecutor's office and law enforcement agencies in order to improve the effectiveness of interrogation. My client also wrote that the first test of the machine would be conducted under the supervision of the Ministère de la Justice. Thank you, Counsel. The accused may return to his testimony. This testimony makes no sense. None whatsoever. Okay, we'll read this book and then we'll leave. It 
is not about hurting someone, but to use pain as one of the methods to convince someone to testify. Do you think it is acceptable to inflict pain during the interrogation? In extreme cases, yes, but my device is not inflicting it. And the prosecutor naming my device the torture machine only shows his deep ignorance on that subject. Order, please. <laughs> and I admonish the accused to make no offense to any of the participants of this trial. Please, return to your testimony. Right. I saw a metal rod on the ground. There was blood on it. My blood. Then I opened the door. Ah, uh, so many things I did wrong here. Well, I could have, like, planned to walk out. Ugh. Or I should have never bathed after she beat me, stuff like that. I opened the door and walked out into the stairwell. Oh boy. I goofed. I used the stairs. I goofed so many times. Hope you guys aren't disappointed in me. Buy this game and try it yourself. <laughs> See if you can do better. I think of all kinds of ways I can do better at this point. So we're gonna go get beat up again so that we're bloodied. <laughs> Let's just dream. Drink some champagne. Read the newspaper. Oh, okay. I thought they weren't gonna beat me up. I was gonna be like, that's dumb. I entered the Café de Paris Cafeteria. I wanted to drink some good wine and Pretty sure you'll say the exact same thing. Parisian rabble tried to throw me out, screaming that there was no room for gypsy thieves. They beat me and threw me into the street. I was all covered in blood. Monsieur Eaton, why did you walk into the same cafe where you had previously been attacked? I was hoping that this or similar rabble. Okay, so he doesn't question that I did it three times. <laughs> So this is a about 12, 20 through 30. Okay. I do not recall that. I opened the door and entered my building. Can we pass each other here? Is that okay? I'm gonna go over there, I'm gonna drink that champagne, and then I'm gonna <laughs> walk back through that door. Okay, so there, there's like too much time, I don't know, it's hard to figure out what to do in this free time. Oh no, we're gonna, we're gonna read the paper. I read cultural analysis. An important event is approaching, there you go. I opened the door and entered my building. Now we should pass the guy, I guess. I parked the neighbor who was coming out of the building. He could have noticed the blood on my clothes, but, but it belonged to me, not to the victim. It was the result of the bar fight. I uh, opened the inner door. I've done so many things wrong. What happens next? Then I go to sleep, right? Yeah, this is okay. Okay. Guys, I hope it's clear. I could have done this so freaking much better. I the elevator grate. Okay. I took the elevator to the second floor. We're gonna bathe and go to bed, I think. I regret everything. I opened the elevator. I opened the door and entered my heart. Sure, people were yelling at me this whole game. It's okay though. Tried my hardest. I, yeah, well, I got no excuse. I suck. 
I'm washing off the blood from the sa being beat up from those two people for the third time. Three baths in one day. Three beat ups in one day. And then I'm gonna go to bed. I was even too tired to undress. Is it all you want to testify, Monsieur Eaton? <laughs> oui, Monsieur le Président. And so I close the hearing. It is time to present your position. Okay, it, there's no way I get out of this. I done goofed. <laughs> if I get out, then there it is. Such a suspect testimony. Monsieur le Président, the accused tried to trick himself off the responsibility. He used cunning rhetoric, trying to hide more and more of his new lies. However, in view of the evidence presented by the prosecutor, I have no doubt that Alfred Eaton, defendant who appeared today before the court, murdered Marie Capet in cold blood. Please, let the High Court not be deceived by his tearful stories about a poor gypsy from the country who gained his success with hard work and which Marie Capet so cleverly tried to destroy. It was the accused who destroyed the life of a poor girl and her family with full premeditation. And what did that poor girl do to deserve such cruel fate? She was searching for a better life and was employed as a maid in the same building in which a dangerous psychopath lived. According to the a free maid. the accused is guilty. Therefore, I apply for recognition of Alfred Eaton, defendant who appeared today before the court, guilty of all charges against him and for imposition of the death penalty by beheading on the guillotine. <laughs> Monsieur le Président, uh, Monsieur Prosecutor used a lot of high-flown words. However, during the preparation of indictment, he made many mistakes. As to the hotel room, my client had rented the room in the Caucasus Hotel on the night of the murder. However, as he testified, he had planned a meeting with a prostitute. Not okay, to murder the other night, there you go. <laughs> As to the alleged attempt to use the torture device on the victim, my client did not intend to use his interrogation device, which the prosecutor describes as a torture machine, neither on Marie Capet nor on anyone else. This is indicated by the letter sent by my client to the Ministère de la Justice with a proposal of a lawful use of the equipment to serve the law as well as society. The journal of Alfred Eaton clearly proves it, where he writes that he does not intend to use his device against honest, innocent people. It is important to emphasize the relationship of Marie Capet and my client. According to the testimony of the victim's parents, she felt a deep resentment and contempt, both for my customer and for his work and success. It is confirmed by Madame Capet's read, a socialist work of Karl Marx, which was created to destroy the minds of young people. <laughs> the newspaper clippings about Alfred Eaton were found in Marie Capet's room. Is it not strange? It makes this resentment towards my client possible. As to the meeting with Marie Capet in his apartment, indeed, Marie Capet came to visit my client at his apartment, and Alfred Eaton let her in, not expecting such a sudden attack. Uh, hence, the victim's fingerprints in the apartment of my client, and traces of Monsieur Eaton's blood, which were mentioned by the prosecutor. As for Alfred Eaton's weapon, Please note, Monsieur le Président, that my client testified that he had not had the murder weapon on himself. The knife was in his secret workshop all that time. Everyone could have stolen it and then dropped it off. As for the murder, as my client testified, he did not kill Marie Capet. So, who did? Please note, Monsieur le Président, that Alfred Eaton worked on a secret invention 
which designs he kept hidden in his own safe. Neither Hugo Argent nor Le Feu Company were supposed to ever know about it. But that is not what happened. Monsieur Argent not only learned about the invention, but also wanted to come into its possession. This is indicated by a letter from a law firm that was sent to my client. As it clearly appears from the letter to Monsieur Brissot, the maid, Marie Capé, was sent shortly before the murder. I would like to add that the letter was sent from a non-existent organization, and remuneration for Marie Capé's work was not provided. So who and why had she been sent? Thus, there is a reasonable suspicion that Marie Capé was sent by Hugo Argent, who decided to partake such radical steps when the letter from the law firm had not brought any results. Why did Marie Capé die? Maybe she had to be silenced. Maybe she demanded more money or started to blackmail Hugo Argent. There are many different possibilities, and there is a slight chance they will get determined. On the other hand, I think that there are too many doubts to convict my client. As for the testimony of the neighbor who saw Alfred Eaton entering <coughs> the building covered in blood, According to the testimony of my client, the meeting actually took place, and his clothes were stained with blood, but it was his blood, not the victim's. Blood caused by a bar fight. Thank you, Monsieur President. I'm so effed. <laughs> There's no, ain't no way I ain't effed. Oh, new letters. Your father and I are praying for you, and we believe that the court will be merciful. Maman et papa. Postscriptum. Papa is sorry that it did not work as he had planned. What? Uh, I'm screwed. Monsieur Ken, the French Gypsy Association wishes to send you support and condolences for the persecution caused by your gypsy origin. We are aware that it was the main cause of your indictment. We offer you a safe haven if you decide to leave the prison in less official way. One of our persecuted members, who had also been imprisoned in the prison de la Santé, mentions the decayed walls in most of the cells Maybe you could use this information. Signed, X. Yeah, probably should. <laughs> Wait, does he mean like... I thought they were saying I could like break out maybe, but... Maybe not. That was the vibe I got, but maybe they meant an actual prison. Oh no, there's a book under the bed. She read it. Monsieur Eaton, this hurry. The court is ready to announce the verdict. I'm so effed. <laughs> the verdict on behalf of the Republic <laughs> Francaise. The court, as present, hereby finds that Alfred Eaton accused of murdering Marie Capet is guilty of the charges of course him, and sentences the accused for life makes sense <laughs> yep <laughs> sounds about right summary unlocked evidence of defenses 7 out of 13 judges confidence gained 5 Obvious lies uncovered by the court, zero. Discovered game ending, six out of eight. Oh, okay, so there's eight endings, and I discovered six. Justification of the verdict. Alfred e Ethan is unquestionably guilty of the murder of Marie Capet. However, due to some mitigation circum mitigating circumstances, the court decided on a milder punishment than that proposed by the prosecution. Well, guys, I can see lots of ways that I could have done that better and uh, not been convicted. Oh. Is there more?
Can I try to break out? You were sentenced to life. So there is one... Ethan sentenced for life. That is ending number... Two, I get... No, one, two, three, four, five, seven. Okay. Yeah. So I got that. Enter to try again. You were sentenced to life. Unlock endings. Prepare a new line of defense. Try again and discover other endings. Uh, I gotta say, I'm honestly gonna... Let's not do try again right now. Quit the main menu. I am definitely gonna try again, actually. I'm probably gonna try again right after this. Uh, it's pretty fun. I'm not gonna lie. It's it, I, There were some, like, dull points. Um, but they were kind of because I was doing it stupidly. You know, if you're... Pl if you, you know, part of it is, like, I don't want to take time and, like, be reading too much. And, like, looking at, into stuff and just zoning in too much while I'm recording. So I'm gonna play it afterwards and try to go for like an innocent slate and I'm pretty sure I can do it. Um but yeah that's pretty fun. Oh my god, I actually really like this game. It's a, a interesting thing. It's like a murder mystery, you know, like a murder mystery dinner or something like that. Except it's like a game. Obviously <laughs> what am I talking about? And uh I don't know, it's pretty it's pretty cute. Um it's not like thrilling game, but it is pretty it's pretty exciting. But uh, the the random like like all the loading screens kind of you know take away from the action base not the action base but like the excitement level I guess if that makes sense all the those take away from it and uh, you know overall I thought it was really uh, a pretty enjoyable game um, I mean the strategy to it I, I wish there was more potential elements maybe there is I just am not aware of. Uh, I think that if you plan it out smartly, you can you can do what you want to do with it. You can get the ending you want. So I'm definitely gonna try. I definitely recommend it. Thirteen dollars on Steam. Um, I'm not sure how long I've been playing. I would imagine I've been playing for a while. Uh, it's probably over an hour at this point. I don't have like a timer or anything. But uh, it was pretty fun. I'm probably gonna play it again right after I'm done. Even though I should record another game. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Overall, let's just go ahead and do the rating. Uh, Graphics-wise, I thought the graphics were really good, but there were some some messed up details. Like you can see the mouths of characters when they talk were messed up. Uh, sometimes when you looked at the windows, it was like like in the courtroom there were windows and it was like two dimensional outside. Um, it's very like 2010 graphics, I would say. 2010 graphics is pretty fair. It was good, but it could be, be better. Um, there were lots of loading sequences and there's some details that were off. I think graphics wise for this kind of game, you know, this kind of game benefits from as realistic of graphics as possible and it very much so is. Uh, and it's pretty detailed. So I'm gonna say, uh, I'll say eight out of 10 for graphics. Uh, I really like the music. There wasn't a whole lot of variety in music. It was very like emotional filled and it, uh, you know, you got actual instruments in the music and, uh, you know, I'm not sure if it's like full orchestra music. I don't think so, but uh, it's definitely good music. It's thematic, um, but there's not a whole lot of variety, although it doesn't need a whole lot of variety. So I think for that reason, I would say the music is... Hmm, I think I'll say a 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10. You know, and that's comparing it to games like Skyrim and Zelda with music. But, uh, you know what? Yeah, six, because the music's really good, but there's not a whole lot of variety. Um, Gameplay-wise, so, the only problem I have with the gameplay uh, is, you know, like, things like I, I could get in that bar fight, like, three times. You should only be able to use that, like, maybe twice. And it should be a red flag. And maybe it is a red flag when I go in there twice or three times. And maybe it is a red flag when I go in and out of rooms. So, I don't really know for sure. But it does, it should have, like, a more obvious consequence like you should know that it's like the judge mentioned hmm, that's kind of weird that you would go in there a third he did mention it the second time which i was surprised by or like if you're going in and out of building he'd be like why are you going in and out of buildings and stuff like that but uh lots of it's because i don't know you just confused the first time that's why i was doing it but uh, and time just goes so slowly time goes slowly that would be one of the the time gaps between things is too big maybe i ne need to utilize my time better earlier on but uh and then the loading screens this kind of depends on like you being able to just go and go but every time you open a door is a loading screen they should use a uh, passive loading you know where like 
it loads behind the door, and when you open the door, it's, you know, kind of like a... I'm trying to think of a game that does that, but I can't think of a game that does that, but whatever. So they, they should have done something like that. Uh, not that they're extensive loading screens, but... The main fault to the gameplay, I, I literally thought the main the main problem I thought the whole time through was there was breaking in the gameplay that that kind of impacted it negatively for me. There is a look, there's a free complete guide, so I guess you could get guided to the right ending, um, to the ending you want, but that would take out all the fun of this game. That take out the whole point. So there's definitely a lot of strategy involved in this game. There's lots of different angles, multiple innings, always fun. There's definitely replay value to this. It's a $13 game. I don't know if it's worth $13. $13 is pretty cheap for a game. Uh, it's a pretty beautiful game. So I think $13 is pretty fair. That's price lines fair. So uh, for gameplay, I think I'm going to go because it was hard. Uh, it's difficult. Um, there's variety. There's m like, well, was nine endings. Um, and there's like different responses depending on what you do. There are only a few problems with the gameplay, like the uh, you know lack of consequences to repeating actions and the loading screens. So I think I'm gonna get the gameplay a seven. I think I'm gonna give it a seven. And so we got eight for graphics, six for music, seven for gameplay, and that gives our overall a seven out of ten. I think this is our highest rated game yet. It might be. I think our next highest is five point five or six or something like that. I don't really know for sure. Not gonna lie. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this game. I, I think it's worth thirteen dollars. I think I, I think I would go check it out. I think this is maybe one of the first ones where I said I would go check it out. You've only seen one of the endings. The good thing is, since you've watched me play it, you probably know what to do to be innocent or whatever ending you want this time. I wonder how many endings there are. I might have to try this out. This might be a game I could play back home a little bit. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, let me know in the comments your rating of the game out of ten. Graphics. Uh, game graphics music gameplay if you want or at least just your overall rating would be cool as well if you guys have another game you'd like me to check out for new game wednesday i'm always open to the devs feel free to send me keys if you want <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed i'll see you guys next time Bye bye